On a dusty and bumpy road, we crossed the border into Burma. We're on our way to meet Colonel Nerdamia and his soldiers. We are inside Burma. Right now, we're trying to rebuild a new camp, military base camp, and we um, also it's not very far from the enemy, so when we are here, we always have to be on alert and uh, do patrolling all the time. Yeah. The enemy Nerda is talking about is the powerful Burmese army, and the government soldiers have orders to shoot anything that moves in this area. That's why Nerda and his men are always on the alerts. At night, when they, when they do surprise attack, you can jump in a hole. So you can be safe, and then you can hold on. This stuff, this is homemade claymore. We do it, we do it ourselves. This is also homemade, we do it ourselves. Homemade, homemade RPG too. When they're not fighting the enemy, the guerrilla soldiers are fighting each other. <laughs> On first impression, Nerda does not come across as a typical guerrilla leader. And this was never a part of his plan either. The leadership is his inheritance from his father, the long-time current leader, Bumia. I study in the state, in America. In 1994, I came back to visit my dad. I thought I would continue my education because I just finished uh, my BA degree. So I wanted to continue my MA or maybe PhD. And my dad had to face with many, many uh, criticism and many problems. So I, since then, I have decided to work for the Korean people. I have to go to Similar to other ethnic minority groups, the Karen people are fighting against the military regime who are ruling Burma. Can I fight for my current country and especially current people? Oh, we want freedom, we want uh, self-determination and autonomous control by the Korean people, co autonomous state controlled by the Korean people. But to fight for freedom comes at a price. The Burmese are executing genocide against uh, the Korean people. When they come to the Korean villages, they kill, they rape, they take away everything. Nerda wants to show us what he's talking about. We're going uh, to see the old village that was burned down by the SPDC. At the same time as the Burmese regime is promising free and democratic elections this year, they have increased this reign of terror upon the current people. They burn our clinic that we have set up for the people. They burn the school. They burn the, these houses also a plantation, banana pl plantation also they burn. So they destroy. They have a policy called the uh, scorch earth policy. They will burn the place, they will destroy the li uh, livestock plantation and then they put the landmines so that the Korean people won't dare to come back in anymore. These are the people who have fled from the villages and now they are stuck between the front lines. They refuge in the, in the jungle uh, when, the, when the Burma, Burma army come and destroy all the, the old village. Father, can you ask them? If uh, I have any medical problem or... The Italian doctor Rodolfo Turano works for the Italian aid organization Popoli. Oh, you know, he has a, how do you call that? Warm? Warm inside. Yeah, warm inside. The most part when they have a worm, the pain is in the left side of the abdomen. It's good. It's good. Earlier, he could help these people in one of the health stations Popoli had built in this region. Recently, these three stations were burned to the ground. Our clinics uh, were destroyed from the Burmese army. It's not just war that's claiming lives here. 
diarrhea, malnutrition and malaria kill many as well. She had two children, but now she she died. died. Both. Both. Oh. I think that she is anemic. She is. She likes. She likes look anemia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we must remember. We must help our people with ferrous and vitamin B and vitamin. The situation makes it too dangerous for aid workers to move around in this area. That's why Rodolfo is training these guerrilla soldiers. We must use only one tablet, only one tablet of abendazole. Only one tablet. There's a person that helped me. They are in the same time, doctor, nurse and uh, uh, military. The soldiers bring us deeper into the jungle. A family member who lives in this house is ill. Can you ask him how, how he feels? Uh. She got high, high fever in this morning before the lot of malaria in this area. The medicine and training the soldiers have had may have saved this man. He's one of the few who has been lucky enough to receive help. There are still thousands of people who are hiding in the jungle. But even the guerrilla soldiers cannot get to them. This is a real situation because now we stay here and perhaps in two, three days the Burma army come here and occupy and then villagers and people must go around in the, in the forest and the refugee camp. I will step here and then we're here, right now. Nerd and his men are trying to find a place where they can build a new village. Just to rebuild our community, to develop our society and also to develop our economy. If the economy is good, people can support our struggle. If the economy is bad, that's why, you know, we need to help each other. By helping the community, the community also can help our struggle revolution. The Karen guerrilla leader is certain that the fight for freedom will go on for a long time. He does not believe that the elections planned by the military regime will change anything. They have their own plan to, uh, just to hold on their power. So they will try to, to trick international community so that the interna international community will say that, oh, they're changing, they're having free and fair election, but in the and um, you know, actually, they, they they don't change at all. They will continue doing the same thing, just to hold on their power. We are preparing for the worst, so just hoping for the best. <laughs> Oh, yes, sir, sir.